everybody. Welcome to your first video of the year. Uh, this is the first section that we're covering. It's actually section 1.2 in your textbook. It's about points, lines, and planes, and undefined terms. And uh, we're going to go over a lot of different definitions today, some descriptions, some examples, trying to keep this video under 15 minutes if I can. Uh, so first we're going to talk about what is a point. Well, you've seen points before in graphing lines in Algebra 1. A point is a really interesting guy, though. Um, technically, there's no definition for point. That's why it's called an undefined term. There's no real agreed upon or set definition of what it is. We can only really describe what it is. A point doesn't have any dimension. It actually has no size and length and width and height, any of those things in three-dimensional space. No dimension. It was just represented by a dot. So if we were to visually represent this, because geometry is all about the visual, uh, we represent it by a dot, and you name it with a single capital letter. Capital P for point, or it could, could be point A, or point G, or point F. So no dimensions, represented by a dot, uh, single capital letter. All it really does is describe a location in space. So describe a location is all that a point really does. A line, you've seen those also in Algebra 1. A line is one dimension. It has length, and it's represented by this line with two arrows at each end. Those arrows are meaning that it extends without end in both directions. Lines go on forever. So when someone ever asks you how long a particular line is, it's a trick question because lines go on forever. When you visually draw a line, something like this. What you should remember from Algebra 1 Honors is that, is that a line has at least two points. Uh, that way, if you just had one point, you could have this line passing through a point, or that line, or that line. So you need at least two points to really define what direction a line is going in. And you name those two points on a line. This time I'm going to use A and B. Uh, so if I wanted to name this line and write it, I would write line A, B, something like that. Now the order of the letters doesn't matter, so this is, could also be line B, A. And sometimes the third way you'll see it named is you'll see a single lowercase cursive letter like L or M or N or something like that. So I could use the word line and call that line L. That's a bit rare, but you will see it. So those are the different ways you can name a line. You can use the two letters with the line symbol, order doesn't matter, or the word line with the single lowercase letter if the picture gives you the lowercase letter. If it doesn't, and this wasn't here, you have to choose one of these first two ways. So that's a line. It has length. It's one-dimensional. A plane is two-dimensional. It's represented by that parallelogram-looking <coughs> shape down here, and it extends without end also, but not just left and right or up and down like a line, it extends in every direction forever. So it's how can we possibly draw that? I mean, you can't. It's like a piece of paper that's infinite in length and width. It goes on forever. So we just draw like a parallelogram, symbolizing that, hey, it's going to go on forever that way, that way, that way, and that way. Uh, to draw a plane, it's a bit more difficult. We draw it, like I said, like a parallelogram. And let me go ahead and pause this for a second. Okay, there we go, so I can get some more space on my page here. So a plane goes forever in two, in two dimensions, so left and right, up forward and backwards, or if it's a vertical plane, it'd be up and down. And there's a few different ways that we name it, so we visually we draw it as a parallelogram. Uh, you can call this, you have to use the word, plane. And you choose, just like you chose two letters for a line, you choose any three letters in the plane. So this could be plane B, A, C, it could be plane a, B, C, the order of your letters doesn't matter. It can be cab. If you want to get creative, make words out of it. Or if there's a single bold letter here, you can call this just plain M. So kind of like with a line where you could use a single lowercase letter, with a plane you can use a single uppercase bold letter if the picture gives it to you. Now the only caveat with this is that let's say inside this plane you had another point here, call it X, and these are all connected by a line. Pretend that's connected. That's awful artwork. I'm so sorry. Uh, you could not choose B, X, and C for naming it because they're all on the same line. 
You want to choose three points that are not on the same line when you're naming a plane, okay? So again, you can choose three points. Let me change that. Three points that are not on the same line, any order, or a single bold letter if you have one, okay? Let's move on. Okay, so we can do some sketches here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to pause this and read it, and then when you unpause it, the picture that I'm gonna draw is gonna pop up. So go ahead and give it a pause. Okay, so I just started it. I sketched line E, so I'm gonna use a little lowercase e, and I've put points S, T, and U on the line. Doesn't tell me what order. Doesn't tell me how far it's spaced apart. So the freedom is up to me. Then I'm supposed to draw line F which is parallel to line E. Remember from last year that parallel means they have the same slope. I'm going to call that guy F. And then draw points R and G on line F. So point R and point G. It's supposed to be a G. And then draw plane SRU. So if it's plane SRU, that means inside of the parallelogram I draw, inside of the plane, should contain points S, R, and you. So when I draw a parallelogram to represent this plane, I just need to make sure that points S, R, and U are inside of it. So that would be plane S, R, and U. They're all three inside the plane, so I can use those three letters to name it. So that's plane S, R, U. Now for the other questions down here, again, you can pause it and try it on your own, or you can continue with me. Uh, if you don't pause it, I'm just going to go through it right now. Give two other names for line E. Well, if I don't label it or name it with a lowercase cursive letter, I can use two capital letters with a line symbol. So I could call it ST, or I could change the order and make it TS. I could choose TU, or change the order and make it UT, or I could make it SU, or change the order and make it US. For number two, name two other names for plain SRU. Again, choose any three points that are not on the same line. So I could choose, instead of S, R, and U, I could choose S, G, and U if I wanted to. And you have to use the word plane. So it could be plain S, G, U. It could be plain uh, S, G, T. You could do that. Or you could even rearrange those letters. You could have used uh, U, R. I mean, there's so many combinations there. For number three, we haven't used this word yet. Collinear. It says, name three collinear points. Collinear means that they are on the same line. I'm not sure how clear your screen resolution is, but I just wrote in blue, they're on the same line. So we're naming three points that are on the same line. Well, from this picture, the only three points that are on the same line are S, T, and U. And since I'm talking about three separate points, I put commas in between to note that, they, hey, these are separate things. And for number four, name four coplanar points. Well, if collinear means on the same line, then coplanar means in the same plane. So I'm picking any four points that are inside the same plane. doesn't matter which ones. So I can choose uh, S, T, U, and G if I want. They're all inside the same plane. I could choose S, T, U, R. I could choose R, G, T, U, as long as they're in the same plane. Those are coplanar. And since they're separate points, I use commas in between them. Uh, I think we'll skip the next one. We're going to talk now about line segments and rays. They're very, very similar to lines, so it's pretty straightforward. If we have this line up here, and I was to take a chunk out of it, and just grab it and put it somewhere else, that's a line segment. Line segments are different from lines in that they don't go on forever in two directions. It has two endpoints. So a line segment is two endpoints and then all the points that are in between, or all the space that's in between here. And I'll label those endpoints A and B. Now, with a segment, it says two endpoints and all points in between, because hopefully you remember from Algebra 1 that a line is just made up of an infinite amount of points spaced really close spaced really close to each other like that. And that makes up our solid line, just a bunch of points next to each other. Um, so if I asked you how many points were on this line here, and you said two points, you'd be wrong. Only two points are labeled. There are an infinite number of points on this line. Okay? To name it, just like a line, you can use two letters. Order doesn't matter. 
but when this, you put the symbol above it, you do not use the arrows because it doesn't go on forever in two directions. It stops, okay? And there's no little lowercase thing here. That's only for lines because lines are special. They go on forever. They're undefined. At ter it's an undefined term because it goes on forever. It's undefined. Array is kind of like a hybrid. It's a cross between a line and a line segment. It has one endpoint, and then it goes on forever in one direction. So up here, one of those would be if it started here at A and went on forever passing through B. So something like this. I would call that ray AB. Now when you label it, the order does matter here. The first letter is your endpoint. So A has to come first here. Okay. And the arrow that you draw above always points to the right, every single time, just to make it simple. Um, if this was something like A, B, and it started at B and went through A, I would label this B, A. Okay? Just because the arrow goes through A to the left doesn't mean I'm going to draw this to the left. I still start with the end point. Put A second, and the arrow still points to the right every time, okay? Even though it looks a little different from the picture, right? Um, we're going to do something here special with rays called opposite rays after we do part A. So for part A, it says, give another name for segment GH. There's a segment symbol, so I pronounce that verbally as segment GH. Well, obviously, the order doesn't matter for segments. It only matters for rays, so I can call it HG. Pretty simple. Now, the second one, not so much. Name all the rays with endpoint J. Well, there are several with endpoint J. What if it starts at J and then goes through G? That would be ray JG. The endpoint letter always goes first. Uh, let's say I started at J and it went through H, like that. Then it'd be ray JH. And you can probably already see the other ones, right? J, E. Sorry if this isn't writing the clearest. I'm going kind of quickly to keep this video short for you guys. Or JF, which I like because my initials and I'm a nerd. Okay, so those are all the rays that start there at point G. Now, the second part of this question says, uh, which of these rays are opposite rays? These two are opposite rays, and these two are opposite rays. Now, you're probably asking yourself, uh, what's an opposite ray? Opposite rays share an endpoint. So all of these share point J. So they meet the first requirement. The second requirement is that they go in opposite directions, hence opposite ray. So JG and JH, opposite rays. JF and JE, opposite rays. North, south, east, west, opposite rays. Rays. If you notice if opposite rays, let's say I start at J and go through G. I start at J and go through H. Well, you can check to see if they're really opposite rays. They should form a line. It's a nice way to check and make sure they're opposite. Here, name eight different rays. I think I'm going to give you guys that as a challenge. So hopefully if you're watching this, note you're going to, have to do this later at some point probably for your warm-up, so that way you can get used to dealing with a complicated picture of a bunch of rays. And there's some other drawings. All right, so we'll do a couple things. Uh, we'll look at some intersections, a couple definitions, and we will be done to wrap this thing up. So, an intersection is a set of points that two figures have in common. Here we can see that if you have two lines that intersect, their intersection is a point. They cross at a single point, just like when you graph two lines in Algebra 1. When you have two planes intersect, like this blue one and this red one, they cross here at this line. So their intersection is a line. Just like where a wall and the floor meet, that crease along the floor, that's a line. So whenever you have two planes crossing, like the ceiling and the wall or the wall and the floor, for example, they cross and form a line. Uh, we're not going to do some of these sketches. We'll do some of those in class. Intersection, nope. We're going to end with this. So 
Postulates. You've probably never heard that word before. A postulate is different from a definition. A postulate, as I'll write up here, is an assumed fact. It has not been proven. It is something so fundamental and basic that there is no proof or argument for it because it's intuitive. For example, through any two points, there is exactly one line. Because if I do two points and I want to draw a line, I have no option but to draw this one. No other line will hit both points. So it's so basic and intuitive, there's no like argument for it. It's just kind of like common sense, okay? So a postulate's more like geometry's common sense. For the second postulate, if two distinct lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one, as we talked about just a second ago, point. Two lines cross always at a single point. The third really basic fact about geometry is if you have two planes intersect, then they intersect in exactly one line, like we saw on the last slide. And it says two distinct planes, so we know we're not talking about two planes that are exactly the same, just like on top of each other. And the last postulate that we need to know is through any three non-collinear points, there's exactly one plane. For example, if I have three points that are collinear, I can draw a line through them, but there's an infinite number of planes that hit them. I could draw a vertical plane that hits all of them, right? Or I could draw a horizontal plane that has all of them. I mean, there's really tons of different planes you can draw. So if you want to have three points that define exactly one plane, they have to be spread out, right? There's only one parallelogram I can draw that will hit all three of those points inside. If I just had two points, I don't have a plane. I have a line. Because again, I could draw an infinite number of planes. A vertical plane. I could do a horizontal plane. I could do a slanted one. So if you want to have a plane, you need at least three non-collinear points. These are the four basic truths about geometry that we're going to be talking about for the rest of the year. So there's your quick rundown of this section. We'll be talking more about this in class. Hopefully this was helpful. It's a lot of definitions. You might want to watch it a second time. And uh, hopefully uh, we can move on from here and do well.